So you've just finished harvesting your plants and now you've got a big bag of trim. You could throw it out or you could use it to make some bubble hash. Today on Canadian Grower, we're going to be making some bubble hash. Now some viewers might be asking, what exactly is bubble hash? Well in short, bubble hash, also known as ice water hash, is a variety of hashish which is easily made by extracting the trichomes from plant material using only water, ice, and filtering bags. Essentially, the ice cold water freezes and snaps trichomes, stalks, and heads off of the buds and trim leaves. Since trichomes are not water soluble, we will be able to later extract them from the ice bath and use them to make some hash. So with that explanation out of the way, we're going to jump right into it and give you guys a quick rundown of everything you're going to need in order to make and press your very own bubble hash right at home. Alright, so for starters, of course we're going to be needing our filtering bags. Luckily, bubble hash bags can be found for fairly cheap online, so we decided to order a new bubble bag kit directly from Amazon. Now the kit that we grabbed has almost everything we're going to need to make hash. This includes a variety of micron filtering bags, two 25 micron collection screens, a microplane, which is this cheese grater looking thing, trimming snips, storage jars, parchment paper, and even some gloves. Aside from that, we're going to be needing two 5 gallon buckets, ice water, oven bags, and something sturdy to stir everything together with. Now the amount of ice that is needed is highly dependent on your ability to maintain your water's temperature with the ideal number ranging from 32 to 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Maintaining low temperatures throughout the wash is essential which means that the hotter your workspace is, the more ice you're ultimately going to need. In our case, being as we have access to a cold room which sits at roughly 45 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to be washing our material twice, we decided to grab 6 bags of ice which ended up being more than enough for this extraction. Alright, so next up we're going to be needing some of that dried out bud, trim, and larf which we collected from our last harvest. When doing a hash run like this, you should aim to have anywhere from 3 to 8 ounces of frozen product ready to make your hash with. Note should be made that you can use fresh frozen flour as well, but for this video we will be working with product that has been dried and cured. Either way you're going to need to pre-soak it later on before beginning the extraction process. Alright, so now that we have everything we need to make the hash, it's time to get started. For the first step, we're going to need to place our filtering bags into the 5 gallon bucket. Now all 5 filtering bags need to be placed into the bucket in ascending order. That means the 25 micron bag goes in first, at which point we will work our way up until we hit the final 220 micron bag. It is important to have these bags in correct order or the product will not properly filter. For the next step, we're going to be pre-soaking our product with ice and water for roughly 20 to 40 minutes. Doing this will guarantee our material is soft enough to withstand agitation without breaking the plant matter up along with the trichomes. Now when preparing the pre-soak, we're going to want to layer our product with ice. We'll start with some ice on the bottom, followed by our frozen trim, and finally some more ice on the top. When doing so, we want to make sure we add enough ice to prevent the trim from rising to the surface, which can happen once we start adding water. Keep in mind, when filling the bucket, you want to make sure that the trim is fully submerged, which usually means filling up the bucket roughly halfway. Now in regard to the kind of water you use, quality does matter. Cold, clean, and pure water is going to be the best for making hash. While tap water may be the first choice for many, it can contain chlorine and fluoride from water treatment, which may affect the taste of your end product. Because of this, it is recommended that you use either filtered or reverse osmosis water, but again, this is not a necessary step to making hash. So at this point, we've left our ice bucket in the cold room to begin the pre-soaking process. After about 30 minutes, we return to find our product has significantly softened up. Now depending on your water's temperature, you can add more ice, but for us, we are good to start stirring up the ice bath. Now when mixing the ice bucket, you could hypothetically stir for as long as you'd like, however, doing so will increase the amount of contaminants in your end product. Because of this, we recommend doing multiple washes at 5 minute intervals. This will give you varying degrees of quality across each wash while reducing the chances of contamination. So after you finish stirring for 5 minutes, 
you can go ahead and remove the 220 micron bag. This is referred to as the work bag and should be put in another bucket if you intend on doing multiple washes, otherwise it can be discarded as it only holds the plant material. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna need to take our bucket to somewhere with a water source as we will be rinsing each of our micron screens and extracting the hash. To begin with, we start by pulling our 160 micron bag downward until it is no longer submerged in the water. Next, we do a quick rinse of the product with some high pressure water. If there's any finer resin heads trapped, they will fall through into the 120 micron bag beneath. Now this 160 micron bag will ultimately act as our catch bag. Basically that means it's going to catch all of the contaminants which would have otherwise made it into the resin. Of course we are going to want to repeat this process with the 120 micron bag. After rinsing you'll want to pull the bag tight and wait for all of the water to drain. Once it has, we can begin scraping off the accumulated resin heads with either a butter knife or spoon and then transfer it onto the 25 micron collection screens. When doing this, it is a good idea to have either a piece of cardboard or some paper towel underneath the drying screen in order to help absorb and remove water from the product. Of course, we continue this exact same process with the 90, 73, and 45 micron bags. So once we have our collection screen filled with everything we've collected from the first wash, we're going to go ahead and pop that in the freezer for a few minutes which will make the hash easier to handle. We're also going to go ahead and put the sieving screen into the freezer as it is better for everything to be nice and cold for our next step which is referred to as microplaning the hash. Now microplaning your hash is only necessary if you plan on air drying, so if you are freezer drying, there is no need to do this next step. So at this point, we are going to begin microplaning our hash. Now the purpose of microplaning is to grind wet hash into tiny pieces so that the moisture can efficiently evaporate. When doing this, you're going to want to make sure that you're microplaning your hash over a piece of parchment paper with paper towel and cardboard underneath to help with drying. Personally, we like to mix the hash we collect from the 120 and 73 micron bags for pressing while keeping the 25 micron hash separate. Doing so gives us two hash temple balls that are of completely different qualities. So after all of the hash has been successfully microplaned, you're going to want to spread it out as evenly as possible to help speed up drying. When drying the hash, it's best to keep the target temperatures at around 55 degrees Fahrenheit with humidity levels sitting at around 35%. For us, we decided to dry our hash in the cold room which ultimately took us 4 days. When properly dried out, the hash will have a sandy texture with no more moisture present. So now with the hash fully dried out, we can begin pressing. Now there are various ways to press hash, but for us, we decided to go with Frenchie's method to produce a few temple balls. If you haven't heard of Frenchie Cannoli, we highly recommend checking him out as he was a true staple of the hash making industry. All right, so to begin pressing our hash, we're going to be needing a glass bottle, hot water, and some oven bags. Now you don't necessarily need to use an oven bag, but you will need a plastic wrap that can withstand heat. Additionally, the glass bottle you use will also need to be able to withstand heat and pressure, which is why we recommend using a wine bottle. So at this point, once our water is fully boiled, we're going to fill up our wine bottle about halfway with boiling water and the other half with warm water from the tap. Ideally, we're looking for our water temperature to be between 190 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Now for the next step, we're going to go ahead and take our 120 and 73 micron bubble hash mixture and pour it into the oven bag. Now we use our hot wine bottle as a rolling pin and get to work. So as you're rolling the hash, you're going to want to make sure you flip it over frequently. Once the patty is completely flattened out, you're going to need to fold it over on itself a few times in order to get it nice and thick so you can again roll it out. You should be repeating this process anywhere from two to four times. So once we finish pressing, we can lift the hash out from the plastic wrap and begin working it into a temple ball. Now a temple ball prepares the hash for aging through the formation of an oxidized casing on the outside which protects the resin on the inside. To do this, throw on a pair of gloves and simply roll the hash around in your hand until you get a perfect looking ball such as seen here. 
So now that we have our temple balls, we can begin curing the hash. To do this, we simply take a small piece of cellophane and tightly wrap the ball to prevent any oxygen exposure. After that, we can leave our hash in a small jar to cure for as long as we can keep our hands off of it. Ideally though, three to six months for optimal results. Anyway, that just about does it for this video. If you guys did find this video useful, please do consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. Also, please do make sure to follow us on Instagram for any and all updates on videos before they drop here on the YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, I appreciate you guys checking us out here on Canadian Grower. Until next time, peace. <laughs>